Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews in 02, and on today's video, we're taking a look at a cheap and easy way of adding up to 10 fans to your PC setup. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to add a whole bunch of fans to your PC. So if you're rocking a motherboard, which is maybe a slightly older one, and has only got a limited amount of headers, or maybe it's an ITX board, and they are generally limited on how many four-pin PWM headers you've got on your board, this from Arctic could be the answer to your prayers. Now, this is Arctic's 10-port fan hub. This works from a SATA power connection, so you will need an additional SATA power connection on your power supply. It plugs into a single four pin PWM port on your motherboard and it will then relay that signal to all 10 of the connected fans. Now of course not all of you are going to want to use 10 fans so if you've maybe got three or four whatever the case may be anything between one and 10 fans is fully supported under PWM control. Now something I should make extremely clear straight away this fan hub is only compatible with four pin PWM style fan connections. If you're using a three pin VDC or voltage controlled fan. Sadly, this is not supported and if you do plug one in, it will just literally run at full speed. Now obviously, this isn't the ideal situation, but if you do need to connect up 10 fans and they are VDC and they're relatively low RPM, such as the Sharkoon one that we're using in this demonstration, then you can see that potentially could work for you, but ideally isn't recommended. So let's take a closer look at the fan hub. So at one end, we've got the SATA connection. This is for powering the hub and also powering the fans themselves. On one side, you've got the fan headers. So these are ports one to five. Number one is gonna be the one which is actually gonna send the RPM signal back to your motherboard. So ideally, you wanna try and use fans which are all matched. Now, in this particular instance, we're gonna be using six of Arctic's P12 PWM PST fans. On the other side, we've actually got another five ports. So that is port six through to 10. On the other side, there is a two pin connection. Now the two pin connection is used for this cable. So this is your kind of umbilical cord. This will go from the hub itself into that PWM header on your motherboard. Now, as you can see from the close up, this has only got two pins which are actually wired. So they are the spinning speed or the rotational speed of the fans for the PWM. So this is why this is not really compatible with three pin fans because the third pin isn't actually present. The other end is a simple two pin connection, which simply goes in and locks into position. So that is essentially pretty much all you need. Obviously you will need power as well. The hub itself also comes with two mounting methods. So we've got an option for magnetic. So there are magnetic strips on there, so you can attach it to the back of maybe the case's back panel, that kind of thing. And there's also some 3M sponge type double-sided pads on there. So you can stick it onto something which might be plastic. I should say, just to confirm, obviously, the SATA power is designed so that you can power a lot of fans. If you're putting a lot of fans onto a single header, maybe you're using pass-through connectors, which actually these fans do have, you can daisy chain an absolute ton of them. And obviously for some people that may be sufficient, but quite often you'll find that motherboard headers, especially PWM ones and possibly slightly older ones, don't always have enough voltage or amperage to actually power that many fans. And in certain circumstances, under extreme loads with the fans all spinning at 100% RPM, you may actually find system crashes or instability. So again, this is the best alternative. So with all that said, let's uh, turn off the PC behind me. We're gonna disconnect all the fan headers from around the motherboard. Fortunately, it actually has got six headers, but unfortunately that means we've got cables everywhere. I have daisy chained actually the ones in the bottom and also the top. So there's three fans plugged into one header three fans plugged into another all daisy chain together which I'm not entirely keen on and I do actually want to add more fans to the case onto the radiator at a later date so again we have got extra future proof in there or maybe if you're using a case like the Lian Li 011 which you can put an absolute ton of fans in obviously you could put all of your fans into this and not worry about straining your motherboard anyway let's get on with installing this and see how it goes okay so looking inside the back of my PC so this is the Techware VXR case three fans at the top, three fans at the bottom. So I'm gonna unplug the fan header from inside the case so I can pull the cables through and show you what's actually going on. This is a actual mess in here, but that is one of the downsides of actually having this many fans. It isn't particularly easy to cable manage. And if I pull this one through, so you can see I've already got 
the cables daisy chain together and I'm going to just go ahead and disconnect those. So you can see we've got three fans at the top here. So we've got one cable, two cable, three cables. So I'm going to stick those on the top here for now to get them out of the way. And we've got pretty much exactly the same going on at the bottom. So from the bottom again, three fans daisy chain together. So we can just go ahead and disconnect all of those. So what we can do now is look in the back here for a suitable place to actually mount the fan controller. Now obviously I've got my addressable RGB controller there, so I'm thinking just here is going to be absolutely perfect. This is metal, so that is going to stick on absolutely fine, and if we need to make any adjustments or change it later, it means we don't have to worry about sticky residue, etc. So what we're going to need to do first of all is we've obviously got our fan hub, we've got our two-pin connection, so we can uh, worry about that in a little bit. But first thing we're going to need is some power. So luckily we've got a SATA connection here, so all I'm going to need to do is to physically connect that into the bottom of the hub. So that's it, that is our power taken care of. And because this is magnetic, we can just go ahead and stick it on there. And that is essentially it. Power is ready and all we need to do now is to plug in this into a suitable header on the motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into system fan header number one. So you see there's our fan header. So we're just gonna take this single cable and plug it into the fan header now. And then we can tuck these wires back out of the way. So now we can go ahead and connect up the rest of our fans. Now. Do bear in mind, obviously, that is number one up the top here. So we do need to have at least one fan connected to that particular connector. So literally grab your fan and plug it into the top connector. So that's number one done. And we can go ahead and put in number two. And then number three. So you could, of course, if you wanted to, you could just leave it like that. These uh, fly leads, if you wanted to, you could remove those or cable manage them out of the way. So the next thing to do is to connect up the lower three fans. Now you don't have to follow them around in series or no in number. So if you want to make it a little bit easier to cable manage, then you can go ahead and just plug them in elsewhere. So let's plug in the rest of our cables. And there we go. That is now all of our connections on there. Shame this didn't have a magnetic bit on the back of it, that would have been helpful. So that is essentially it, that is all of our fans plugged in. We've actually still got a few spare there and everything's gone in. You can obviously, if you want to, you can cable manage this to however your preferences are, but for me at the moment, this works fine. So let's fire it up and test it to make sure that it all works. Okay, so that's all done. Plugged it back in and it's all working absolutely perfectly, which is always good. Now, some of the benefits we've got of this, obviously, the cable management in the back is a little bit of a nightmare anyway in this case. So cable management potentially is easier. We don't have to worry about wiring up six individual fans to individual fan headers. And also, one of the benefits of this is because all the fans are spinning at the same rotational speed, we can control them nice and easily from a single point in the MSI control center. I can set them to be as quiet or as loud as I actually need. So for testing, benchmarking, etc., I can just quickly put them to 100% by just clicking essentially one button rather than going through each individual fan header, which yeah, obviously is gonna save me a lot of time. Another benefit is for the balance of the airflow. So at the moment, we've got three fans blowing in, all at the same RPM, and we've got three fans at the top blowing out, all at the same RPM. So in theory, it's a balanced setup, although we do have a radiator in there which kind of messes that up a little bit. But at least they're all spinning at the same speed, which for me makes time management considerably easier. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. For the sake of what is at the moment here in the UK, you can pick them up from overclockers.co.uk. For as little as £7 for this particular set. Sadly, for some reason on Amazon, they do appear to be considerably more expensive. I will put links in there just in case things change. So obviously pick one up wherever you can. If you're overseas, etc., then you might be able to find something a little bit different and obviously a preferable price. So anyway, that's going to wrap it up. That has been the Arctic 10 port fan hub. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.